I'm doing a 100 day challenge series to build a village in each biome. The meadows and black forests are both done and it's time for me to move into the swamp. On day 70, I must defeat Bone Mass to activate the Drake Raid. And oh yeah, the Pantsless Saga continues. So let's begin. I spent 100 days in Valheim building a village. Waking up to a beautiful morning on day 1 in this village is a breath of fresh air. I wanted to take a moment again to reflect on these bills, my tavern, my storage house, greater farm, my house I hardly slept in and the blacksmith. Before I head to the cesspool to become Billy Joe and Billy Jane, new loving neighbor, yep that is their new name now, I need to prepare. The swamp is an unforgiving place so I'm not gonna take any risk. Firstly, because the swamp is always dark, I need a good light source for when I'm building. Luckily, I found a trader in my first 100 days and he is the guy with the right goods. Secondly, due to the wet debuff because it's always raining in the swamp, stamina rich food is going to be high priority. Thirdly, dealing with poison. I don't really have to worry about poison that much seeing that I got my root armor helmets in my last episode. It reduces poison damage significantly. Come on blobby bobby, hit me with your best shot. <sighs> Ah, it's like he's not even there. I decided to check on the turnip farm. I reap and replanted the turnips so that by the time I'm back home from the trader, I can make some turnip soup. Hmm, I may have to visit Brendan Greg later. I grab what gold I have saved up and head to the black forest, pay the trader a visit for my headlamp. Not only did I want the headlamp, but I wanted the belt that looks like a fanny pack. Hold up, wait a minute. All right, okay. I know what some of you guys are gonna say. But V, you need pants to wear a belt. Shush, non-believers. After selling the jewelry I stole, I mean, found, I was only able to buy the headlamp. So I decided to raid, uh, provide room service to some nearby crypts. I did Wellington the Skeleton a favor by disposing his old junk in my pocket. But my kindness didn't stop there. I paid Frank a visit to offer my services, to which he immediately declined. Not sure why though. But a few seconds later, <clears throat> under unquestionable circumstances, he fell asleep. So for a day or two, I've been going around trying to find donation for my fanny pack. To my surprise, Frank donated some gold after falling asleep under unquestionable circumstances again. But something got me thinking, how does Frank carry around his gold? No, really, where? Wait, is it here? Oh my god, my brain needs soap. The campaign for gold was over. I finally got my very own fanny pack. Shush, non-believers. I also got some extra certling cores, which I'm gonna use in the future. After the four days fanny pack campaign, I was back at Georgetown to check on Brenda and Gregory. I only saw one offspring, which sadly wasn't enough to fill my boar meat demands. So I spent a day and a half hunting for wild boars. I later departed from Georgetown and arrived at Dwarf Henge Village. Oh yeah, majority of you guys voted to call the village that. Honestly, I was rooting for Frank Fart though. I stopped by the tavern to make some turnip stew, sausage, and carrot soup. Mm -mm. Before I head out to the swamp, I made sure to gather some materials for two portals. I place one at the greater farm structure and call it Swampy, and head out to scout for a spot to build a new village. Sniped a few billies here and there, and spotted an angry Stumpy along the way, who I was glad to see. So I lure him over to give him a few poke. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Minutes later, I discovered one of those things like Mother Earth had too much spicy food, and this was the end result. Ah yes, that was me once dark times. Decided to dig around to stop the wannabe human torch from spawning, but Stumpy didn't like me violating the land. I'm surprised I even survived. In that moment, I had a big brain idea. I decided to lure him back into the fire, which worked so good. Thinking that all is well, Larry the Leech bit me, fell into the skeleton, walked back his jewelry, and more wannabe human torch making their way over. Finally, I was able to focus on making a nice pool to help out Mother Earth dire situation. Obviously, it didn't work, but it helped keep those wannabes in check. I'll find a fitting name for them later. Not too far, I saw another one of those flame geysers. The names sound uninteresting, so I decided to call them Earth's Fiery Butt Farts. Nearby, there was an unexplored crypt, which I used to build one of my proudest cardboard boxes on top. Just look at the fine architecture. Now that I was settled in, I was thinking I should build a village near the Fiery Butt Farts. Why? One, I'm not a weirdo, but I would get unlimited charcoals and certain cores and a never-ending fire source. But I had an issue deciding on how to set up the village. I didn't want to build it directly on the trees, but I was in a swamp, so I have to. I thought about building structures on raised ground, but that doesn't feel like it would flow with the theme of the biome. So I went with the first thought. I started by building a stairway going up and thought this was a decent height to build a village. 
But before I build anything further, I deeply in need of iron, which I'm gonna use to form the foundation for the village. Luckily, there were two unexplored crypts nearby, so on day 8, I took some time to help out my fellow neighbors, Billy Joe and Billy Jane. I stopped by their home to help them with their hoarding problems. I found myself just mining my way through huge piles of nasty junk. Woo! Iron scraps! I let her clean out Billy Jane's drooly box to help her overcome her insecurities. Told her she was too far gone, but at least your nose have a beauty mark. Oh wait, never mind. Up back outside to get some fresh air and ran into another angry Stumpy. Lured him over to show him my favorite spot in the swamp. Oh, hot, 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 hot! I think he likes it. Later he got stuck in the pit and well, yeah, never underestimate what spice food can do. I'm still recovering. So after taking down my second Stumpy and with some root left over from my last 100 days, I can finally make a root chest armor. I like it. I think it complements my legs. On day 10, I was done cleaning out two crypts. So far, I got about 130 iron, which I think is enough to start building to see where I'm going with the village. I easily set up a smelting area using the free circling cores lying around and borrow a few copper from the blacksmith in Dwarfhenge Village. I was thinking of using my house in Dwarfhenge Village as an inspiration, so I went ahead and made an octagonal layout just like the side structure. I imagine it to appear to be supported the same way by the beams underneath connected to the trees. But what I had envisioned is not what materialized. That day, my brain was like soft wet rice in lukewarm water. I didn't want to start over, so I thought about my second idea of raising the ground a bit and then have a column going all the way up connected to the angle beams underneath. Honestly, this was a design accident, but I grew to love it. At this point, some of my stamina food was getting low. I didn't get a whole lot of boar meat the last time I hunted, so I decided to spend enough time to gather a decent amount. So for three days, I spent hunting for boars, but on the third day, I found something special. I found a one-star boar on the island next to the starter island. So I lured it back to Georgetown, which took a bit of time, but it was easy. I spent another day waiting for her to tame and named her Princess. Now go forth, princess, and multiply. <clears throat> I mean, do the thing. Seeing that I was in Georgetown, I might as well check on Steve to see how he's running the tavern. If you didn't know, this is Steve. Steve was suffering from social starvation, playing alone. So I took him in. Come here, boy. You want some resin? But now, he's a happy boy. Isn't that right, Steve? But you don't have to suffer like how Steve did, which is why I want to talk to you about our sponsor, Dot Host. Dot host provide dedicated high performance server hosting for Valheim so that you and your friends can play together at any time. You can easily import your world by using their drag and drop interface and if you like using mods, you can drag and drop your own mod pack or perform one click installation for individual mods. It's so easy, even Steve can do it. I use Dot host for my community server and the performance is very good. You can easily switch your server location so that you can get the best ping. If you want to check them out, use my link below to get 30% off your first month's purchase. Later, Steve. So I was back at the swamp after cooking a few extra meals, and now I can focus again on the village. I was thinking of using this structure as a central hub to the village. I started by adding two cords on each corner, making the structure 8 meters tall. I decided I would use the same umbrella roof overhang design used on my previous builds. First, adding a 26 degree beam, followed by a 1 meter wood at the end. I attached a 26 degree beam at the end of the 1 meter wood, but to ensure the roof holds up, I added 2 meter core woods for support and completed the whole frame of the structure. I tried giving the roof a chance. Nope, nasty looking. So I was back to using my 26 degree stairs and got the whole roof filled out. I then added a 1 meter beam at the end of each 26 degree beam, then added another row of 26 degree beam, making the roof beam be more pronounced. I later shifted my focus to the entrance of the structure. I envisioned it to have a huge door for the entrance and a huge window around. So I started making my custom columns for each of the core wood poles. Slowly, the build is taking shape. I added half wooden walls at the top and the bottom to frame the windows. I was working on a style for the top of the window, so I was playing around with two dragon heads and uh... Yeah, no comments. So after playing around with the dragon heads, I had a design I wanted to use, but I needed a lot of fine wood. So I head back over to Georgetown, I grab a cart and head out to chop some birch and oak trees. I spent about 3 days gathering more than enough fine wood, then I was finally back at the swamp village. I started adding the dragon heads to frame the top entrance doorway and the windows. I also added another row above to give the windows some depth. Afterwards, I placed thatch roof under the main roof to get the shelter buff. I later added iron cages for the windows and added the final details to make the build pop on day 24. 
I switch my focus on the inside to build a spiral stairs to access the first floor that will connect to other parts of the village. After adding the spiral stairs on day 25, Frank thought it was time to pay me a visit. But first, he greeted the locals, saw him manhandling Larry the Leech before making his way over. But this was the first time I was at ease with a raid. He stood there while I pelted him with arrows. Oh my god, a swap is too easy. After the easiest raid of my life, now it was time to make a proper home. While trying to get from tree to tree, I discovered a method to make a platform going across. By standing on one side of the edge and aiming at the other side with a 1 meter floor, then I can use a 2 meter floor to easily snap on top to make a level bridge to get to nearby trees. So I made an octagonal layout using 2 meter wood iron beams for each side. I added 45 degree beams to the corners and connected the edges with 2 meter beams. I then added 2 meter poles followed by a 1 meter pole on top to later add the roof angle beams on top of it. I added some 26 degree beams at the bottom of the build. I was trying to make the base look like a bubble. My vision for this build is, I wanted it to appear to be a floating fantasy house, so I went back over to Dwarf Hen's village to raise a tavern pantry for yellow mushrooms, but it was empty. I also went over to the blacksmith to borrow some nails. Afterwards, I checked Georgetown Tavern, hoping there is some yellow mushrooms. Luckily, I found a couple. I then head back to the swamp and added a 2 meter pole to the center of the angle beams. I added item stands on all sides going down, followed by placing the mushrooms on each of them. I was then able to achieve this look, which I think looks cool. Proceeded to get the roof structure up and finish the roof using the same design on the hub. Added some thatched roof under it to get the shelter buff so I can sleep. I didn't have enough iron to use for the windows, so wooden fence would have to suffice. Later added some details and computed the bill on day 30. Honestly, I can say that this bill came with a heavy cost. Later on, Frank visited again, and this time he brought his brother Hank. I wasn't worried not one bit, so because they couldn't reach me, they took their frustration out on my smelters like the temper tantrum babies they are. Aw, Frankie Hanky getting up shit. Thought to myself, I was safe up here, nothing could go wrong. Sometimes I hate this game. I never expected a slick move like that and I instantly started to panic. I had 30 health left, barely have stamina, and I was soaking wet from head to toe without any rested buff. I couldn't think straight, wet noodles brain me didn't realize I could have escaped in the crypt and regained my composure. But no, I chose to take the wet noodles route. Log loving boy Hank wanted me dead, thought I could lure him into the fire in hopes it would take him out. When I was just about to make a run for it, So I was back in the land of the living and the half dead. Realized there was no Hank and Frank, grabbed my items from my wet soggy dead body and noticed some troll skin and gold. Ha! Ah, Hank didn't make it out alive. I'm not a useless viking after all. On day 31, I went over to Dwarf Henge village for wood, which was what I was doing from day 1. Notice I dumped a lot of random crap in some carts while I was scraping for wood. Came to the realization I urgently need a trash bin. So I popped over to the trader and noticed he dyed his beard grey. Got a thunderstone to make an obliterator and finally can get rid of all these resin and grayed off eyes. Got a cart emptied and decided I was gonna chop some pine trees for some coal wood. Don't think I will get close to losing my sanity again. So when I was about to leave the village, look who I saw. Now that Hank was out of the way, I was presented with a new problem. I needed a way to get across with the cart. Remembering what I've discovered while building a flat wooden pathway in the trees, it shouldn't be hard to make a quick one. I chopped some nearby logs to get some coal wood and regular wood and made a bridge. Now I can smoothly go over the other... Hey, so yeah, I chopped some trees. Uh, not much. And it only cost a little bit of my sanity. So I loaded up the cart and dropped off the wood at the swamp village, getting ready for my next project. I was thinking of making a workshop. So before I build a workshop, I need something to connect to it. I envisioned a floating platform with a rope bridge, and I was thinking to build it on that tree. But I was low on iron, so it was time to visit again my favorite neighbors, the Billies. While trying to find a new crypt, I ran into Stumpy again. Eh, at this point, he's pretty much donating root. He later turned to night, and I hate the swamp at night. Feels like I'm gonna get a jump scare from Jerry the Jacket. Found a new crypt and got my hands dirty again. Made sure to pick up the yellow mushrooms for the next build. 
Later on, got back to the village and chucked the iron in the smelter so I can start building. Started making a stairway going up, found Stumpy lurking near the village, waiting for round 2, poor thing. Finally got to the desired height and created the same octagonal layout like my house. Basically, I'm recreating the base design of the house. Once I had it completed, I tried creating a rope bridge using coal wood. I use wooden walls to place the coal wood in such a way it has like a slight belly like a real rope bridge. I then use 1 meter wood to make the ropes. Well, they look like one. I think it's a fair attempt. While I was building, Jerry was trying to sneak up on me. Imagine being roughed up by a flying coal loading wear. I don't like Jerry. He makes me paranoid. I then completed the bridge on day 37. I loved how it turned out. I later made a layout for the workshop on a nearby tree. It's a little bit different, but it should work with the theme we have going. I added coal woods to frame out the body of the structure so I can add roof beams next. My construction sites have been hazardous lately. Not my usual standards. Oh well, who cares? Second thought, maybe I should work on the floors. So for the base, I want to make it look like it's floating like the two other structures with the angle beams under it. I then got the flooring done and now I can focus on the roof. Found myself building in the nights again, all paranoid. Place a build piece and then check if it is all clear. After working on the roof for a bit, I added some half walls to frame out the windows, then made my custom columns for the doorway and finally the dragon arch touch. Completed the build on day 43. They didn't want some oversized workshop, so I think it's a perfect size for the village. Now that I had a workshop, I did a few basic interior work. Moved in my crafting tables, added some chests, and made a display cabinet. Gonna need some armor stands. Later worked on a rope bridge to connect the platform and the workshop. I needed some upgrades for the crafting table, so I head over to Georgetown to find some flint and hunted some neck boys to make some poison resist for the upcoming battle with the next boss. Running around picking up flint in the meadows felt so refreshing and relaxing compared to the swamp. It's good to take a break sometime. It was night and it was time to head back over. After a chill day in the meadows, I was feeling relaxed returning to the swamp. With no care in the world about my surroundings, I tried my best squeezing a few upgrades in this small space. Here comes Jerry. I was frightened. If I was wearing pants, it would be filled with the colors of the rainbow, brown being the dominant color. So I found myself cornered like a deer about to get skinned. So I panicked. Yep, my brain turned wet soggy noodles again, so I couldn't attack or block properly. So I got another chance on life and thought Jerry would have left the scene. I hate you, Jerry. I thought I could lure Jerry out, then run and auto grab all my stuff and get out. Swap is too easy. Getting my cheeks clapped twice in one night, I think it's time to head to bed. So I woke up the next morning on day 46 feeling so violated after being manhandled by a flying jacket. Yep, that feeling of hitting rock bottom. Jerry was gone, so finally I could grab my stuff. I later returned to building. I switched my focus to work on the stairway and the path on the other side so that the village could feel closer to being polished and added another rope bridge to connect to another section of the village. Took a break from building to upgrade my armor after reliving the trauma in my head with Jerry. The next day, I popped over at Dwarf Henge Village to check on the Great Off Farm. Basically, maintenance and getting wood. Too bad I can't have one in the swamp. Getting wood would have been so easy. A few minutes later, I got a troll raid. And my god, Frank is very persistent in this 100 days. Nothing interesting happened, just the usual beatdown. Sniff Frank's butt a bit, checking for gold. Don't get it wrong, it's not a fetish of mine, I just needed the money. I later passed by Georgetown to get some carrots planted and decided I was gonna revisit some of my explored crypts for yellow mushrooms after. Found myself down memory lane remembering when I slapped Frank for the first time. Ah, good times. Popped in the crypt, grabbed a few yellow mushrooms and ran into the ghost I ditched on day 4 of my first 100 days. Later roughed up Frank along the way to another crypt. While I was searching, I decided to look at the map just to remind myself how far the next boss was. It wasn't really far from the spot island, so later I decided to prep a bit more. Made some health and stamina meat and also some more food to get through the next coming days. Later went on more yellow mushroom hunting in the nights in the swamp, and yes, Jerry was there. Yeah, boy. Checked out my previously explored swamp crypts and got a decent amount of yellow mushrooms. On day 52, I head over to Dwarfhenge village to grab some deer trophy to make a sty breaker so I can mount it in my new workshop. Actually, I plan to whack the boss with it. And proceeded to make some iron nails so I can make a longship. I head over to Georgetown so I can build a boat on the start island, seeing it was closer to the next boss location. So I sailed towards new lands. After landing, I chopped up the boat in itty bitty pieces, stuffed it in my pocket. Which pocket you ask? So yeah, um, I put it in there. 
I later found the boss location and greeted a few billies. Spotted a shot nearby which was perfect to set the portal down in. I later got back to the swamp village and was trying to visualize my next bill which was gonna be a tavern. I was thinking of putting it on that tree. So on day 53, I started working on the tavern. I first created a temp pathway to the tree for easy back and forth travel and made a layout for the tavern. Decided to work on the base first, adding the angle beams underneath. I plan to make this build seem to be supported by a column just like the central hub. Later started working on the roof, added additional support for the beams and completed the basic structure. At this point I ran out of wood so it was time to chop trees again. It was satisfying chopping the long logs in two like this. So later I came back to the village and saw I had a wild deer. I guess I'm starting a petting zoo. Come here dairy let me touch you. I later drop off all the wood and head back to building, completed the roof of the tavern. Still reliving the trauma in my head after Jerry incident, I no longer build in the night. The next morning I started working on the columns that would look like it's supporting the tavern, as usual making my custom columns again. I added all the remaining details to the tavern and computed the bill on day 67. Definitely a place I would go to to drink some mead. I started building a rope bridge to connect to the tavern. After completing it, Frank and Hank were back smashing my smelters again. I think it's time I find somewhere to put the smelters out of their reach. On day 68, I got a new bow, an iron hat gear, and a big boy shield. I went to boat taverns in each village to pick up the stamina and healing potions because the day is upon us. So on day 69, I grab my giant hammer from the workshop and head to the swamp. Got some bones in the soup to simmer to summon the boss. Out of all the boss I fought so far, it seems like this one let himself go. And he was nasty looking. What is that? Couldn't find a name for the thing. The ugly was distorting my brain. Tried shooting him with arrows. Apparently, it seems to only tickle the thing. Tried the at gear. Sadly, I can't reach it. Tried the big hammer, and it was perfect. All I need to do is stand here and do this over and over and. So yeah, my hammer broke. I had to head back to repair it. After which I returned. Used up my health, stamina, and poison resist potion fighting him for around 17 minutes in total, and it was finally over. Didn't die once. Got a wishbone and a trophy that looks nasty. I didn't want it, so I chuck it in the obliterator over at Dwarfhenge Village. I have no regrets. So on day 71, I took a break from the Swamp Village to have some quiet time. I went over to Georgetown to reap some carrots to cook up some breakfast. Decided to go to the dock to enjoy the sunrise to free my mind a bit. Did a little fishing and caught my first tuna. Later returned to Dwarfhenge village to cook the fish. The next day at the swamp village, I wanted to move the smelters so I created a platform above their current location, added iron beams for smelters to rest on, and placed some core wood for rails so I don't easily walk off. Added a few more details and was able to get this basic area done. I then switched my focus to the shabby pathway I was thinking to build another rope bridge that connects to a path leading to a dock. I imagined the rope bridge connected to two columns on each side, so I tried my best to achieve this look. Honestly, I can say the rope bridge with those columns are pretty awesome. I would then work on the rest of the pathway connected to a simple dock. Yeah, no, it looks a bit blah, but I plan to add a bit more detail later. So on day 80, now that I had a dock, I wanted to mine some copper and tin. So I decided to sail to Dwarfhenge village side to get some. So much better than walking back and forth between village. I woke up the next morning and grab a cart and head out mining for copper the whole day. The following day, I decided to focus on tin only. Remembering I was low on berries, I decided to do some foraging in the forest. I later saw a campfire for the goblin camp in the plains, which stirred my curiosity. I got an idea when I saw Frank not too far from me, so I teased Frank into following me. Little did Frank know, I was leading him to his own demise. Before I even reached the falling camp, I was rushed by the little green dudes that looked like Yoda from Star Wars. Then Frank came in to save me. Maybe I was misjudging him all this time. Seconds later, I heard of this battle shout, then saw Frank getting the blue slapped off of him. Tragic. Saw a big green dude, pretty much like the little green ones, but uh, high on steroids. So I stayed on top of the crypt and shoot it and his little buddies too. Seeing that I was near the plains, I had my root chest armor on that protects me from severe mosquito bites. I can step in the plains with confidence. I was able to kill my first death mosquito with ease. I wanted to grab some cloudberries for decorating later on like making the white banners, so I collected a full stack and some extras. I head back later that day, picked up my cart I left behind and head home. Dropped off the cart at the dock to unload it on the ship. The next day I had to repair the village gate. It wasn't a raid really, 
prank came solo and smashed my torches because of what happened the other day. That was really petty. I decided to spend some days in Dwarf Henry Village to farm up some wood. I wasn't in the mood to chop more trees. So for the next three days, I sat there and did nothing. I got raided a lot during that time though. First one was a swamp raid. Basically, the blobby bobby party. Later on, I will get a certain raid. Don't ask how I died there. I don't want to talk about it. Once I had a decent amount of wood, I head back to the swamp village to drop off the wood. Then I set sail with the goodies I've collected. I later arrived back at the swamp village. While I was trying to unload, a trollfish landed on the boat, which looks pretty cool. I then filled up the smelter to start processing the copper and tin. Seeing that I was in the smelting area, I thought I should add a few more details, like a box holding some coal, added some vines to the nearby tree, and made some new fancier light source. Switch my focus to work on the path leading to the dock so it doesn't look flat by adding some arches and better light source. Added some vines later because it looked a bit dry, so I added a little green here and there and it started to feel cozy. I would then work on the flat platform by adding a flat open roof structure and added some vines to that as well. Later on, made a welcome board. I didn't give the village a name yet, so comment below what I should call the swamp village. Oh, look, another raid. It's not a biggie really, but I must admit the raids have been relentless lately, and so far I haven't gotten a Drake raid. Further down in time, I recreated my house on the next tree just to make this side of the village feel complete like this was the home district, and tossed some vines on it. I had one more thing to do, and I had a few more days left. So on day 95, I focused on doing the interior of the tavern, so I went over to Georgetown to chop a few birch trees to get more fine wood. Once I had all the needed fine wood, I head back to the tavern. First, I tried to figure out how to add the heart for the fire. Did so by the help of the iron beam so I can place it down. Added my custom columns to frame the sides of the fireplace. Used the dragon heads to frame and detail the top and finish it up with a bit more detail. I then started working on the counter Use stools to add a nice lattice design, followed by a 1 meter floor for the countertop. Later tried to squeeze some chests in the floor because space was limited. I later added the rest of the details to achieve this look, which I think feels warm and welcoming. It was day 98 and I was exhausted. I did nothing but dance my way to another successful 100 days. So here is the final preview. First off, just want to say guys, thank you so much for the support and helping me hit 10,000 subs, which is so cool. I never thought I would get this far, so I feel so honored. Thank you for the support and love for this series, which takes a long time to do while taking care of my baby son, so I appreciate your patience and I hope it was enjoyable. I will be posting this world on my Patreon page if you want to download it and support the channel. Special thanks to my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in keeping the channel going and thank you for watching. And remember to always aspire to inspire. Peace.